Hello to everyone. This lecture was presented at the MUSOC 34th Annual Meeting in the city of Toledo, Spain, in June 2022. Lumbar pain is the most prevalent pathology in chronic pain clinics. This creates the need to be in permanent contact with the fluoroscope or X-ray equipment. Ultrasound imaging offers several advantages when used to guide needle placement during spine procedures. In this lecture, we will try to describe the relevant sonoanatomy of the spine to make understandable for future application in the practice. Because the presentation would be too long, we have split it into two parts. In the first part, we will deal with general aspects, describing the sonography of the lumbar spine. In the second, we will talk about the most frequent procedures. Ultrasound, since they were introduced in our specialty, has become the gold standard for procedures performed on soft tissues. However, when they are applied to bone structures, they constitute a great challenge. And for this reason, they have not been able to relegate fluoroscopy to interventional techniques performed on the neuraxis. We will try to make clear concepts so that we can use ultrasound safely in procedures performed on the lumbar spine. If I had to recommend any paper in relation to the topic we will discuss below, I would select these two ones. The use of ultrasound for intervention in chronic pain is increasingly frequent, and more bibliography is needed to show us how to perform the procedures clearly and precisely. The spinal cord is protected by a bone framework, the spine. This frame allows the mobility of the trunk and the transmission of forces to the limbs while protecting the spinal from potential injuries. The difficulty of ultrasound in passing bone structures is one of its greatest limitations. Therefore, on our screen we will observe different acoustic shadows that we will have to interpret or decode. On the spine, we use these shadows and take advantage of the acoustic spaces or gaps that are created between the bone structures to guide our procedures. We will have to become shadow hunters, interpreting each of the shadows we see on the screen. Let's talk about anatomy. All the vertebrae are formed by a vertebral body and a posterior arch. This posterior arch is formed by two pedicles, two transverse processes, four articular processes, two superiors and two inferiors, two laminae and one spinous process. In the lumbar region, each vertebra will change in shape depending on whether we are on the cranial or caudal part of it. These osseous reliefs will condition different acoustic shadows. In this three-dimensional image, we can observe the different components of a lumbar vertebra. The spinal nerves exit the vertebral canal through the inner vertebral foramen below their corresponding vertebra. Having exited the vertebral canal, the spinal nerve divides into two branches, a larger anterior or ventral ramus and a smaller posterior or dorsal ramus. The ventral ramus innervates the skin and muscles on the anterior aspect of the trunk, while the posterior dorsal ramus divides into medial, intermediate, and lateral branches. The lateral and intermediate branches supply innervation to erector, spinae, muscle, and skin. The medial branch supplies innervation to the posterior vertebral arch. This would be the real anatomical image of a spinal nerve. Must take into account that each medial branch innervates the joint at its same level through a short branch and the inferior one through the long branch. A curvilinear low frequency ultrasound transducer is used for lumbar scanning. This transducer allows deeper penetration and wider viewing of deeper structures through the bony windows. Let's talk about sonography. If we know the different patterns we can find in the axial and sagittal plane, we will be able to perform approaches to the different vertebral structures according to the pathology. Axial plane view. As we have already mentioned before, the shape of the vertebra will change depending on if we scan at the level of its upper or lower aspect. In the interspinous pattern, shadow of the facet joint transverse process and vertebral body will be visible. In the spinous pattern, the shadow generated by the spinous process and vertebral lamina are clearly identified. It is important to point out that the spinal canal and the structures that cross it over will only be visible in the interspinous pattern. In the spinous pattern, the acoustic shadow generated by spinous process and lamina will not allow penetration of ultrasound. These two patterns will be repeated throughout the scanning of the lumbar spine in its axial axis.
Therefore, interspinous pattern is the most relevant pattern in a sagittal axis. It allows us to identify the posterior complex established by the ligament, flavum, and the dura mater, and the anterior complex established by the dura mater, posterior longitudinal ligament, and vertebral body, as well as facet joint and transverse process. Sagittal axis view. Starting over in patients with normal body mass, we will not be able to identify any structure. The acoustic shadow of the spinous processes, mountain sign, will be only visible in patients with large adipose tissue in the lumbar region. Sliding the transducer to lateral, laminae will become evident. We will observe discontinuous shadows with acoustic gaps between them, horse head sign. Through this discontinuous acoustic shadow, we will identify the spinal canal between every lamina. Over the facet joints, the acoustic shadow will change and take on a camel hump look. Over the transverse processes, three consecutive transverse processes resemble as a trident, composed of high perichoic curvilinear structures with finger-like acoustic shadowing. Summarizing, Spinous processes, mountain sign, laminae, horse head sign, facet joints, camel hump sign, transverse process, trident sign. Spinous processes, mountain sign, laminae, horse head sign. Facet joints, camel hump sign. Transverse process, trident sign. The interlaminal pattern is the most relevant pattern on the sagittal axis. We can identify the posterior complex and the anterior complex. The two complexes can be observed intermittently through the interlaminar acoustic window. Thank you for your attention. See you in the second part.